Some of the most important decisions you will make in PUBG are actually decided before you even loot your first item. I'm going to give you six tips about flying and landing, and that's coming at you right now. Hello, and welcome to the third video in my PUBG Beginner's Guide series. Let's talk about the least interesting subject in this high-speed thrilling first-person shooter that is PUBG, flying and landing. In the last episode, we covered the key concept of picking your landing zone, and now we're going to cover how to actually get there as efficiently as possible. If this is your first time to my channel, and you enjoy watching entertaining PUBG clips, and want to improve your gameplay, smash that subscribe button and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Key concept number one, flying. While it seems simple enough to just push F and drop from the plane and fall to the ground, where the parachute automatically opens, it's actually fairly complex. The most difficult factors with flying are combining various techniques to reach your desired landing zone first. The three main flight techniques are max range, mid range, and short range. Max range is opening your chute as soon as the option is allowed and feathering the descent. This allows you to reach approximately 2.5 kilometers for large map squares. Feathering is accomplished by tapping W every 1 to 2 seconds. Midrange is flying in the direction of your landing zone, falling at 126 kilometers an hour, which is accomplished by simply pressing W from the plane. The midrange technique will give you approximately 1.5 kilometers for large map squares of distance. Finally, short range offers the fastest route to the ground, which is a straight dive, reaching a terminal velocity of 234 kilometers per hour. When possible, diving significantly decreases the time to landing and also pushes the height the chute opens a little bit lower, giving you a small advantage when trying to get to the loot before enemy players. Through the combination of these techniques, you can optimize your flight to land on a targeted building in the shortest amount of time. For example, jumping from the plane and holding W in the direction of your landing zone, and then opening approximately one halfway through the descent and feathering will give you two kilometers of travel. Once your parachute auto opens, the shortest and fastest route to the ground is accomplished by holding W. This will let you travel approximately 200 meters or two grid squares on the minimap before touching down. This can be useful for planning to land on or at the entrance of a building by starting your freefall dive 200 meters from where you intend to land. You will dive straight down and your chute will auto open to travel the remaining distance as fast as possible. Key concept number two, landing. Now that you can fall with style to your desired landing zone, it's time to actually figure out where in that zone you want to land. Now obviously, you have a town selected, but on approach you should also select a very specific location which should be influenced by a few key factors. Obstacles, approach angle, players, friendly and enemy, and landing zone size. Obstacles such as trees, towers, and other superstructures pose a very considerable threat to your landing, as occasionally the game can decide you have reached a landing zone and will cut your parachute away even though you're still extremely high. It's best to plan your landing spot to avoid having to circumnavigate obstacles, as this reduces your risk of sudden death, as well as the time it takes to land. Approach angle is basically your heading into the landing zone, which if chosen properly and identified early can help you to easily land on building rooftops or even balconies. When choosing your approach angle, try to give yourself some room for error in both directions, short and long. This is best illustrated when trying to land on the long narrow apartment buildings such as the ones located on the military base. If you plan your approach angle for the long run, you will increase the odds of actually landing on the roof and reduce the risk of skidding off the top and taking fall damage. Landing on a rooftop above a balcony can be much easier and give you an advantage in certain areas such as the estate on the east side of the map. The next major factor when choosing your landing site is the player situation. Fist fights are never ideal and are extremely risky and should be avoided if at all possible. This is done by attempting to pick a landing site away from enemy players that still offers the potential for basic loot requirements. In addition to avoiding enemy players, it's also best to stick close to friendly players. This can be a tough decision and trade-off as it's often hard to change plans at the last second due to other enemy players. However, it will still be better to land with your team than to be separated. And thusly, we reach the final major factor when picking your landing zone, its size. If you're landing in a large town, it's very easy for your team to get spread out and easily picked off and eventually killed with no support. 
At the same time, a large landing area offers the potential to be spread out from the enemy players instead of fighting over a couple buildings in a small farm town. Marking a certain area of the town and landing within a building of that marker allows your team to loot their own buildings while still being close enough to offer fire support if necessary. Hey, thanks for watching. If this video helped you, please let me know by giving me a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you haven't already, smash that subscribe button and I will see you next time.